Carbon 2185 Terminal Overdrive is on Kickstarter now, doing very, very well. And here to tell us a little bit more about it is the creator himself, Robert Mariner Dodds. Robert, welcome to the show. Uh, hi, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Uh, so I, I enjoy the show. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> you. that. Yes, that's awesome. Um, to Carbon 28, 2185 uh, Terminal Overdrive, it hit Kickstarter a week and a half, two weeks ago, and it funded in 53 minutes. So congratulations <laughs> yeah. on that. That's incredible. Uh, but why Thank don't you. you tell us a bit about the world you have created in Carbon 28, uh, 2185? It's a bit of a mouthful, oh, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is a bit. It is a bit. We were, we were originally going to call it 2085, but we felt that some of the technology was a bit too far-fetched to imagine happening in the next 65 years. That's fair. Uh, <laughs> you know, robots and uh, uh, synthetic humans and that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, but if you don't already know what Carbon 2185 is, it's a 5e-based cyberpunk game. And when I say 5e-based, I mean it uses the D20 skills and modifiers advantages disadvantages that system we don't use any of the fantasy or magical elements in fact we kind of strip those out and replace them with cybernetics guns um all the kind of cool stuff you would expect from a cyberpunk game right and um, um describe the world you've created uh, yeah. for this it's a worst case scenario <laughs> you ah. know? uh okay. it's where i it's where i think a lot of people can see our world going if appropriate steps aren't taken, if things keep going as they are and get worse, you know, all of the all, all of the uh, ice caps have melted. You know, uh, the sea levels have risen massive amounts. Uh, these major cities on the oceans have to have big walls around them, or land reclamation, or a combination of the two. Um, the environment is awful. There's smog everywhere. You get it's just terrible. You know, uh, mm. terrible heat, terrible cold. So, so you've got a bit of a you got a bit a bit of a water world meets uh, uh, Blade Runner type uh, thing going on here. Yeah, yeah. We we kind of only look at life in the cities uh, because life outside of them is is it's very difficult. You know, it, it does exist in the Badlands, kind of more Mad Max style out there. But mm, yep. in the cities, uh, <clears throat> it's very Blade Runner esque, and okay. we wanted to go with that kind of uh, that feeling. That's cool. Was was that inspiration for you? Stuff like Blade Runner and and Mad Max. Is that how you guys built the world? Was was yeah. inspired by those sort of so, things, or is it brand new stuff that you sort of came for, up on your own? For me, cyberpunk was always uh, it had to feel claustrophobic. Mm. You know, with these huge huge buildings, um, uh, smog, so you can't see very far, and setting it in cities with usually walled cities okay. it makes it feel claustrophobic you know the, the main setting is san francisco you're in san francisco and that's pretty much it you know mm, okay. um you can leave san francisco if you want but there's there's not much out there except other cities very much like san francisco gotcha um so terminal overdrive is a new is it a new uh new rules and mechanics or is it just uh is it a, ca a campaign what uh, what is so, terminal overdrive uh it's a new source book and mission book written by a uh, games <laughs> workshop author ben counter who okay. wrote the horace harris uh, trilogy he's a very fantastic author he's a best-selling author um and he wrote this for us and it's a campaign but it also includes new player rules uh such as the ability to play as a a, a robot but with newly acquired sentient ai uh like the movie chappie or like okay. c3po you know these, okay. these robots that are alive um but they're very very new in the world so most people and i say most people you're talking 999 out of a thousand people <laughs> don't know they exist okay you know okay and so, so these are are these are new characters <laughs> That you've created? Yeah, or you can play as... You can play as... So these are new classes you're adding to the system? Uh, they're more like races. R okay, I see. Okay. We call them origins because uh, um, races obviously doesn't work in a, in a human, in a real world kind of scenario. Yeah. You, I mean, everyone's human. Yeah. Got, right. um, unless they're a robot or a simp, which is, you know, we couldn't use the word replicant because it's copyright. Right. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to. <laughs> so... 21, uh, 2185 is 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 it based off of the D and core D and D core rules or like do you guys take that and sort of you know 
stretch away from that a little bit? We, we, we used it where it worked for our vision, which okay. is a very streamlined, easy-to-play system. If you want a complicated cyberpunk game, you don't have to look very far to find them, you know? But you have to look very hard to find one that's streamlined and action-based. You know, you watch a cyberpunk movie uh, or a TV show like Alter Carbon, the, the combat's very fast-paced, very yeah. cinematic. You play cyberpunk games such as cyberpunk 2020 or shadowrun and the combat takes hours Mm. you know you don't get the same feeling of fast-paced action so we wanted a game that was very fast-paced and we started off by making our own system and then we got to a certain point where we were like well hang on a minute fifth edition does all of this stuff better Ah, okay. <laughs> than what we've just come up with. So we can just use that. <laughs> we can use the parts that work for us and get rid of the parts that don't. Okay. Well, how so difficult... Sorry. Play... Yeah, you don't need to play 5th edition to play Carbon 2185. All the rules are in the book. Every single rule you need okay. is okay. in the core rule book. Okay. So, um, so Carbon 2185 is a, is a complete system. And you've taken the, fi- the 5E rules that you need, and it's all still in there in that one book. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a book for the players as well as for the Game Master? And uh, what do you call your Game Master? Did you change the name? We call them Game Masters. Okay. We couldn't think of anything else. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. So, we came up with a lot of a lot of stuff, but it just it, every time we tried it out in a session, it just felt so unnatural and forced. That just calling them a GM worked so much easier than calling them like uh, a black hat, you know, right. type of hacker yeah. or you know, uh, um, an overseer and that right. sort of thing. It, yeah, just calling them a GM felt so much more natural yeah. to everyone. <laughs> just easy, no easier for everybody to understand the role. Yeah, yeah. What so, uh, the character? Cl- sorry, Sean. Go ahead. That's, sorry, that's okay. The uh, so what? What are What's included in uh, Tarbin twenty one eighty five? Like, what are your books that are available? Is there a game master book as well as a player guide, or is it all in one? The core rulebook combines both, uh, because we did we didn't know if we would get funded the first time round. Our funding goal was ten thousand pounds, and we didn't know if we would get there. Hmm. We eventually ended the first campaign on one hundred forty three thousand. Wow! So we did get there. Uh, <laughs> But it means the initial scope, which was just this kind of one small indie book we thought would sell like, three or four hundred copies of, yeah, um, we sold five thousand copies. Wow! You know, in the first year, um, but yeah, it's it's everything you need is in the in the core rulebook. You got all the all the player options, uh, a load of enemy stat blocks, and even two missions. You know, uh, two sessions worth of, of a story to play for, uh, included in the core rulebook, as well as character sheets. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so everything's there. We also have more. Um, we also have a city source book available, which which details uh, London, Manhattan, and Tokyo in more depth, and that's written by uh, Ben Counter, Darren Pierce, and Guy Schlanders from How to Be a Great GM YouTube channel. That's awesome. Um, yeah, and that's a really that's a really great book. And Guy was living in Tokyo at the time when he wrote it because I I oh, wanted someone who could who could get Tokyo right. <laughs> yes. Um, unfortunately, only one uh, 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 native uh, Tokyo resident applied, and their English wasn't it wasn't great. It, it certainly wasn't good enough to write a book. Right. Uh, but it would have been great to work with someone like that. Yeah. Well, how, no, no one wanted to. <laughs> how guy, difficult? did a very good job. How difficult was it actually uh, adapting something like the D and D core rulebook into a cyberpunk world? Because D and D is typically very, very fantasy based. Uh-huh. Well, how difficult was it creating a cyberpunk world and adapting five E rules to it? Yeah. So I think that's the better way of putting it. We made the world and then looked to see if there were rules that worked for it, or if we had to make our own. Okay. So the basic combat works fine, you know, and combat is, is the core of it. You know, you have skills, points, you have armor class, you know, you roll to hit, you roll for damage. That works perfectly. Uh, we do damage a little bit differently because we have guns, and guns are devastating. Right. You know, but we have bulletproof armors as well. So you have damage res- resistance or damage reduction on most armors, which reduce incoming firearm damage by a certain value. 
Um, so that way, if you're not wearing a bulletproof, you're going to get mowed down by any one of the gun pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> but if if you're wearing them, you can you can go back and forth a few times before ultimately dying. Okay. But, um, okay. We had to, you know, huge parts of it we had to just remove. Magic, for example, is gone. Right, um, yep. Anything above 10th level we got rid of because uh, it just kind of, up to 10th level, as you approach 10th level, it starts to feel very superhero. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Once you go above 10th level, it felt like we were playing, you know, the Avengers rather than the Cyberpunk <laughs> game. Yep. It everyone breaks the game, had yeah. all of these abilities and everyone was super powerful <laughs> and, you, you know, they could take on tanks one-on-one and win. <laughs> uh, and I thought, well, let's put a cap here at the combat levels. <laughs> there is a limit to humanity even in 2185 and it's level 10. <laughs> okay. So what, tell us about the character classes. What character classes do you have available and how differently do they play from each other? So we have six core classes, and it's quite late in the evening here, so I, I'm going to try very hard to remember them all. <laughs> we have uh, the Enforcer, which is your standard. It's similar to a fighter, actually. Okay. Um, your standard, just generic car- class, very easy to play. Uh, they get bonuses for damage as they level up. They get some very simple abilities. They're certainly competitive. You know, every all, cl- all the classes are pretty well balanced against each other. But the Enforcer is the simplest play. It's the perfect class for new players okay. or players who just kind of want to chill out a bit, you know, and have a uh, have a fun time. When I play in D and D, I usually play as a fighter because I like to just chill out and role play rather than have to worry about what my character's going to do. I always play as a magic user. So who am I going to play in in cyber, uh, carbon? A hacker. A hacker. Yeah, a hacker. Okay. Yeah. Hackers have exploits, which uh, function in similar ways to spells. You use uh, their expendable resources that you use to create special effects, such as targeting an enemy and exploding a grenade that they have on their belt. Oh, oh nice. Oh. There, there's no save for that. But it works the other way around. Enemies can do that to you. Ooh. Well, I just won't carry, okay. I won't carry any grenades. Well, yeah. easy. Good luck convincing your uh, your enforcer not to carry grenades that's, when that's he finds true. a pile of them for free. <laughs> uh, what what about uh, a thief or rogue? That's usually where I I aim the sneaky one. Well, that's the scoundrel. Not typically okay. cyberpunk. We based it heavily off of Han Solo. I was just gonna say yeah. that's got to be Han Solo. <laughs> yeah, it was totally. Um, well, I mean, Harrison Ford is cyberpunk, you know? <laughs> yeah, this is true. So we have the scoundrel, and the subclass for that, the smuggler, is just Han Solo. You know, they have the ability to shoot first, they get both. <laughs> uh, nice. The scoundrel, the smuggler scoundrel always shoots first, you know, no matter what anyone tries to tell you. Um, <laughs> then they also have a really fun subclass, which uh, some people don't really like, but it's my game, so I put it in because uh, I think it's really fun. Um, and that's called the Stuntman, and Ooh. they get bonuses for shooting while jumping or diving through the air. So <laughs> if, they're, if they run and dive, they get a bonus uh, to hit. If they jump out of a window, they get a bonus. They, uh, they, get re- they don't take any damage from jumping through panes of glass, falling through windows. They take half damage, you know. So they're a really, uh, a really fun subclass. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but it really encourages just a lot of movement. And that's where we go differently with the scoundrel to, um, to stuff like uh, uh, D&D. D&D, with its thieves, encourages them to hide in the shadows and jump out and stab. We yeah. really wanted the scoundrel to play as a very movement-heavy class. Each subclass encourages a lot of movement in combat. The stuntman, for example you're not going to get any bonuses unless you're running around and jumping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or, and diving and, you know, diving behind cover and shooting people as, as you do so or, you know, and stuff like that. So we really wanted um, each class to have its own feeling. Did Terminal Overdrive add any new classes? It didn't, but it did add the new origin. The new and, origin, okay. Uh, deeper rules for hacking. It added our uh, equivalent of our um, cyberspace called... Uh, a perisphere, which is uh, Latin or Greek, I can't remember. 
<laughs> it's it's one of those uh, fantastic old languages, uh, but it means kind of a never ending social space. Right. Awesome. Um, what's the future? Uh, uh, what's the future <laughs> hold for uh, Carbon Twenty One Eighty Five? Once, uh, well, now that o Terminal Overdrive has been funded spectacularly yeah. well, uh, you've got to have your eye on the future. What What's the future hold for your for your RPG? Well, as long as people keep backing it, we're going to keep doing more stuff. You know, uh, we have a new Terminal Overdrive campaign coming in January. Uh, not Terminal Overdrive, uh, Carbon 2185, but we can't get the details on that yet. That's fair. We're not ready to... We, we can't announce the next one before this one's over. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but you have thoughts for the future. Uh, yeah, it's keep, Continue to out. expand it and keep going. That's Absolutely. awesome. Absolutely. That's you great. Know, we've got um, the next 12 months planned out, uh, which has radically changed over the past week and a half since launching this campaign. But um, yeah. it's all good. It's all all, all, uh, all greenlit. Uh, we got some people working already on the next stuff and the stuff after that. So awesome. um, it's going to be a lot of really fun stuff. Um, yeah, Carbon's just a really great game. I play it a lot. I've been playing it since 2016 when it started as like a homebrew. Um, and then I was like, hey, you know, I've got something here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, your yeah. Kickstarter proved that you really did. So the Kickstarter, yeah, was, it's going I've on now. Blown away. Yeah, that's awesome. And you've got uh, thousands of people playing it now. Congratulations on that. Kickstarter okay. is going on right now. It's there until November 13th. Um, mm -hmm. Where will people be able to pick this up if they miss the Kickstarter? If they miss the Kickstarter, we're going to be on Pledge Manager until it releases in February. Okay. So they're still going to be able to go and get the similar deals to... Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, on Kickstarter, it's reduced. You know, the prices are lowered for mm -hmm. Kickstarter backers. Right. Because it helps. It directly helps support us. And, no, and there's less people to pay cuts to, you know. <laughs> but once it goes on Pledge Manager, uh, it's going to be full price. Okay. Uh, but you're still going to be able to pre-order it. And you're still going to get it the same time as the Kickstarter backers in February when it comes out. That's fantastic. So everybody, go check it out. You have until November 13th to get the discounted price. Uh, Robert, it's been a pleasure speaking to you and learning about this world. It sounds amazing. Uh, I'm a D&D &D fan, and this this game, uh, I need to play this. This sounds <laughs> awesome. I love I love the fact that I'd be a hacker, you know, if, if that's what I'm going to be. You would definitely in. be a hacker. Yeah, definitely. that's... Yeah. We've got a hacker and a scoundrel. You guys just need uh, one more player to round it out. You that's know? right. You just need somebody to take all the, all of the punches. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, a daimyo or an enforcer would uh, take that role very nicely. <laughs> Excellent. Awesome. Need our meat shield. Well, Robert, yeah. thank you so much for spending some time with us to tell us all about Carbon 2185 and Terminal Overdrive. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you for having me. It's been great. Hi, I'm Robert Marin Adults from Dragon Turtle Games. Thanks for watching this. Uh, be sure to check out Terminal Overdrive on Kickstarter now. Subscribe to OMG Nexus on YouTube. The button is below me. I hope they edit it in, otherwise I'm going to look foolish. Not that I don't already. Uh, have a good evening or day or morning or whatever time of day it is you're watching this.